Welcome to the Next Steps Robotics Stream. We've seen so far how cool and exciting the robotics projects can be and how much fun students of all ages, male and female, can have. In this lesson, we'll look more closely at the process for building a robotics project. This process has six main steps as follows. This process has six main steps as follows. One, defining problems that can be solved using robotics. Two, building the robot that is the hardware for the robot. Three, designing the robot program. Four, programming the robot program. Five, testing the robot functionalities. And six, evaluate and share the robot project. As a quick rule of thumb, any problem that contains a repetitive task can be solved with robots. This is, for example, the case of a robot needed to clean my office. It's very dirty. Or a robot that solves a Sudoku puzzle. Of course, these are not the only tasks that lend themselves well to robotics. Anything that requires precision or that can be done in a place where it's hard or impossible for humans to reach can be solved with the robotics project. A robotics problem needs to be defined clearly and precisely in order for a robot to be built. This includes defining clearly what the robot must do, what the robot should not or cannot do under any circumstances, as well as other constraints. For example, consider a robot that must pick up a bomb from a secured area. Then take the bomb to a safe place where it can be detonated by a team of experts. The robot must be able to pick up the bomb, navigate its way to a predefined area, then gently place the bomb in that particular area. It must not at any point in time drop the bomb, not even in the secure area. Remember, gently put it down. Nor must it bump into any other obstacles, because if it does, then the bomb might explode. How students build the robot hardware, of course, will influence how well the robot will meet the requirements. However, for each problem definition, there is more than one possible design. Online, you might also find a lot of designs together with instructions on how to build robots. And initially, it might be a good idea to have the students follow these instructions and then, if possible, ask them to change this design. The software that runs, <coughs> the software that runs on the robot, as well as the human-robot interface, are two of the main software programs that need to be designed for a robotics project. In most robotics projects, one program runs on the robot, causing it to do whatever it is supposed to do. And another, product, uh, another program represents the interface between the user that controls the robot and the robot. Sometimes these programs run independently, sometimes they run together. Now, the program that controls the robot can either be a graphical user interface, for example, in the case of um, the robot that was going to pick up a bomb and move it somewhere else. This graphical user interface is controlled by the user. Or it can be a program that runs on the robot that allows um, the robot to interact with humans. This is the case, for example, for humanoid robots, which interact with humans um, in various situations. In most of the student robotics projects, we will focus only on the program that runs on the robot independently of the controller program, and this program is the one that will tell the robot what it has to do. There are many tools that allow for the implementation of the design code. We'll focus on enchanting in this stream, but there are other, others out there um, that achieve the same function. We can test the robot in many ways. Looking at the robot hardware, is everything connected? Is the robot sturdy? What happens if we just shake it a little bit? At the software that runs on the robot, does the software follow the design or meet the requirements, as well as both the software and the hardware running together, that is looking at the entire robotics project. Similarly, we can evaluate the hardware and the software individually and then together. Does the robot do what, what it's supposed to do? Is the design efficient? Does the robot battery last for long enough? Does the software on the robot consume too much battery? There are different roles that correspond to each of the steps in this process, as shown by this diagram. Of course, the same student can do a robotic, robotics project from start to finish, but if working in groups, 
It might be more fun if roles are assigned to each individual student, and then of course we ensure that roles are switched between, between students such that all students have part of all the fun.